Are you not scared of hiking alone? That is one of the biggest questions I always get asked. Along with, I'm not brave enough. I wish I was as brave as you. I wanna be able to go out hiking alone or camping, but I'm just too scared. But I also get comments along the lines of, you shouldn't be hiking alone, especially because you're a woman. Whereas I think that solo hiking can intimidate anybody. And I wanna address that today. Hiking, being in the wilderness and backpacking are some of my true passions. And a lot of the time they have been solo. I love hiking by myself and find it empowering. It can be incredibly peaceful and I feel so much closer to nature as well as myself. Plus it's got the added benefits of either working through anything that's on my mind or completely emptying out all the noise and clutter that's in there. I love everything about it. But that being said, you do have to take precautions to make yourself safer, as there is a risk to anybody heading out into the woods alone. So in this video, I want to share with you 15 safety tips for solo hikers. And that's going to apply to people that are wanting advice about starting it for the first time or more experienced hikers, because I want to make sure that everybody's time outdoors is as safe as it can be. I am not ashamed to admit that I was frightened the first time I started hiking alone, but my love of nature and being outdoors overrode those fears. I decided to face it head on, learn as much as I could and prepare myself to make myself as safe as possible in the outdoors. The more knowledge I gained and the more confidence I had in my skills. This combined with being fully prepared is how I addressed my fears before doing solo trips. You will gain confidence and you will gain strength and that feeling when you're outdoors being completely self-reliant and independent is wonderful. Solo hiking, I tell you right now, is not something to be feared as long as the right precautions are taken. Always be sure to tell somebody where you're going and if you don't live with anybody make sure that you tell a friend or a family member. Make sure they know the route that you're planning on taking, how long you're going to be and what time you expect to finish and make sure that you check in with them when you've finished. Never disclose that you're hiking solo and that applies on trail and off trail. So if you're bumping into other hikers don't start telling them that you're hiking on your own. Make out that you're with somebody else or you're with a group. They could have just stepped to the side to take a photograph or to see to toilet business or they might just be slightly behind you or slightly ahead of you. You can also say that you've just recently tracked them and they're not too far away. So always make sure that people don't know that you're on your own. Now also with that, don't declare that you're going to a certain route at a certain time on social media ahead of time. Keep it secret and that applies on trail as well. Don't start doing your selfies and declaring where you are for the world to see. Save your selfies and your GPS tracking and your fitness tracking, all for when you're safely at home. Self-protection tools apply for both animals as well as humans. And you can choose to carry such things as mace, pepper spray, firearms, but my only advice would be make sure that you are fully trained on how to use it because having something and not knowing how to use it properly can be more detrimental. We are not allowed to carry any of those things here in the UK because it is illegal. They are classed as weapons. So I choose to carry an emergency whistle. Now this helps me not only have that ability to scare off animals by having a loud noise, but it also allows me to call as a distress signal, as well as if I have been injured and I'm waiting for help, it allows me to signal to that my rescuers where to find me. And one tip, if you have an emergency whistle, do not keep it in the bottom of your bag. Make sure that it's attached where it is easily accessible in case you get into any danger. The only other thing I carry are trekking poles. So I often hike with trekking poles and these can be used to defend myself if I need to, but also as an additional support. So if I've fallen over, hurt my ankle or my knee, they can be used as a bit of a crutch. The other option is to learn a little bit of self-defense. Now, this is something I did many, many years ago, and it is advisable to have a little bit of awareness about what you could potentially do in certain situations. So anything like that will certainly add a little bit more strength to making yourself a little bit safer. Make sure to check the area that you're hiking in, what wildlife dangers are there. So it could be anything from mountain lions to bears, snakes, cows, deers. 
they all need handling in a different way, so make sure you know how to deal with confrontation of different animals. Here in the UK, we seem to mainly have things like midges and ticks, so make sure that you carry the appropriate equipment, such as a tick removal tool or midge spray, things like that. And also make sure to know how to treat yourself if you are attacked. Never leave home without a first aid kit. And more importantly, know how to use everything that's in it. Know a bit of basic first aid. Make sure that you know what to do for particular hiking injuries and have a little practice before you leave home. If you've got any questions or need any help with what to put in a first aid kit, I will leave the link for this particular one that you can buy pre-packed and I will tell you everything that I keep in it as well as the extras I take out with me. I'd also highly recommend taking out something like stormproof matches or a fire starter in case you need to build a fire to keep yourself warm as well as a thermal blanket or thermal bag and a emergency shelter. Everything that I talk about I will link in the description box below for you so you know where you can get hold of these things and also read a little bit more about them. But the important thing is go prepared. Make sure that if something happens to you when you're outdoors you can help yourself as much as possible until you are rescued. Being aware of your surroundings applies whilst on trail and before you get on trail. So make sure to plan your route before you head out anywhere. And whilst you're planning your route, make sure that you know your get out clauses. So if something goes wrong, if you sprain your ankle or suffer from heat stroke, you've got an idea of where you can get off trail at the next track or the next turn in. Also, make sure that when you're on trail, you're not just looking ahead. Look behind you, look to the sides of you. If you are on switchbacks on climbing windy roads, look above and below you. Make sure what you know what's happening around you at all times. There is that discussion about whether you should listen to earphones or not for music, podcasts, audiobooks. If you choose to do that, make sure that you have the volume as low as possible. And I would highly recommend only hiking with one earbud in. So you've at least got one ear that can hear everything else that's going on around you. Hold yourself confidently because most attackers will go for easy prey. If you need to, stare them straight in the eye. If you feel like you're being followed, let them pass. Or if you can, make distance as quickly as possible. But don't look scared, don't run away, just make that distance up fast. I don't just mean a mobile phone as a communication device. This might be perfect for contacting people if you've got signal and perfect for those GPS tracking apps, but absolutely hopeless if you're in the wilderness in a remote area and you need to contact somebody. So I would highly recommend getting a satellite phone or a personal locator beacon. They all perform in different types of ways, but the key point is that they work via satellite and not by a mobile phone network. So these will allow you to have that communication with family and friends. It also gives you the option of being able to call emergency services in case you need help. And some of them do have advanced features so you can track on them, you can check out weather, you can also have routes planned into them and follow them as a tracking device. Now the particular one I use is the Garmin InReach Explorer. I've done a whole different video on this so I'll link it up here for you as well as in the description box below. But there's plenty of different ones out there. Another popular one I hear about is the Spot device. So it hasn't got as many features but again it's something that you can still press a button on and get help if needed. But two key points please let me give you is if you have any of these things, first of all, make sure you know how to use them and who you need to contact if you get into trouble. It's okay having them, but you need to know the numbers and who to contact. And secondly, take a power bank with you to charge them up in case they die. So not only make sure they're charged up fully before you leave the house, but make sure you've got an ability to charge them if they do lose power when you're out and about. Carry a map and a compass. So you might have all these trendy apps, but they could potentially fail on you. Carrying a map and compass can certainly help you out if you get lost, but also make sure you know how to use them. Either do something online or go on a navigation course or a map reading course. I promise you it will be worth it. Checking the weather might sound like a very obvious tip, but do you always check the weather for the mountains that you're heading into? So checking the weather at the town in which you're planning on hiking from will be very different weather to that in the top of the mountains a few thousand feet above you. So make sure you check mountain weather forecasts. 
Prepare always for freezing conditions, so take extra layers and hot drinks if it's planning on being cold, or boiling hot conditions where you might need to carry extra water, or take sunscreen, wide-brimmed hats, and also never forget to carry a head torch because you might end up starting your hike in daylight, but it might finish in the dark, so make sure that you take a torch with you as well. Make sure your planned trip is within your comfort levels as well as your fitness levels. So if you have to start small, just do a couple of miles, do that. If you feel that you haven't got a lot of confidence yet with navigation, stick to well-marked trails. Don't be heading off into areas where there's no trails if you haven't got advanced navigation techniques. Also, do not have an ego. If you feel out of your depth, there's no shame in admitting it. Stop, turn around and go back. Even I have got a lot of experience hiking, backpacking, mountain climbing. I will still turn around if I don't feel comfortable. There is nothing to be ashamed of. No matter how short the distance, always carry snacks with you. You might decide that you've done a couple of miles and you want to go even further. And then you think, well, I can't, I've got no snacks and water. Make sure you always carry water with you. Another thing I'd recommend is carry a way of collecting water while you're out and about. If that's not something you want to do, you can just carry extra water with you. There's plenty of platypuses and bladders and extra water bottles that you can get out there. So just fill that bag up with how much you think you'll need for a day's hike. But if you're planning out on being out there a lot longer, get something like a water filter so you can fill up from streams. Again, I've done a whole different video on this one, which I will link up here for you. But this is perfect because it means that when I'm out and about, I know I can just carry one bottle with me and fill up as I go. So I'm not having that extra weight with me. I also carry an extra spare bottle just in case there's going to be a longer distance between water sources. And this all ties in with my tip from earlier on where I said about planning your route. Make sure that you know not only where your get-off points are but also where your water sources are as well. If you're planning on camping alone, which by the way is so much fun if you've never tried it, a little tip I will give you is go dark. And what I mean by that is make sure that you put your tent somewhere out of sight. Don't put it on the track or next to a track of a, a really busy trail. Try and go off somewhere, make it very discreet so there's less chance of anybody coming across you in the night. And another tip I'll give you is put your shoes on the inside or at least cover them up somehow. Don't leave a single bag outside or a single pair of shoes outside. It's just advertising that you camp in solo. This might be my final tip, but it is one of the most important, and that is go with your gut instinct. If something feels wrong, turn around and go home, or make a decision, a sensible decision to change that situation. Do not have an ego. Do not feel you have to push on to prove anything to anybody. If you don't feel comfortable, go home, turn around, it's okay. I was saddened when I was doing research for this video to hear so much advice out there saying that people should not hike alone. And I will not deny that hiking in a group has got its benefits for certain situations that might be a lot safer and certain situations that have less risk. I am not denying that. But nobody should let fear get in the way of something that they're truly passionate about. I would say from my experience and all the trails I've done and all the hikes and camping trips, there's so many different things to be afraid of, but assaults on trail are few and far between. I would be more concerned with wildlife, with weather changes, with not being prepared, with getting lost. Those are the things to be more worried about. Those are the things that you can prepare for, learn, and improve your skills on to gain your confidence. So if this is something that you're wanting to do, do not be afraid because believe me, it is a wonderful feeling being out there hiking alone. I cannot imagine a world where I can't hike into the mountains or stride out into the wilderness for a bit of quality me time, to spend time with nature and to have that feeling of self-reliant and independence. It is truly a wonderful experience and I would highly recommend it to everybody. And the most important message I want to leave you with is go out there and have fun. Spend time in nature, spend time out hiking and enjoy it. So until next time, goodbye. It's just where I want